Welcome to another episode of Stone Speaks. In this series, it is my great privilege and pleasure to share with you an interview that our dear friend and decorated Danish rock journalist Henrik Tuxen did with his dear friend and my favorite guitar player of all time by a wide margin, Stone Gossard. Today's topic is Jeff Ament as the musical leader of Pearl Jam these days, but before we hear from Stone, I'm going to turn it over to Henrik, with gratitude on this Thanksgiving week, who's going to tell you about Jeff Ament's bedroom in 1984. Then uh, the first time I heard of Jeff, or when that appeared, it was like I, I started out in that band with Sharing Patrol with two guys um, coming from... Seattle, just uh, in, in here in Copenhagen in 1984. And at that point, Seattle was really remote as a musical city. It was so many restrictions. and um, But they were part of the whole music collective. And uh, and actually, they, they not only knew, but they stayed in the same uh, collective or whatever in Fremont with uh, Jeff Amon. And I remember what they told about Jeff and his room. Was that Jeff room? Jeff room, that was a bed and 200 hardcore punk records. And I mean, maybe Jeff was just ahead of time. Really, what else is there? What else do you need? So uh, that speaks something about Jeff. He's passionate. A couple of things I'd like to add about Jeff as a bass player. I think uh, speaking as a, as a rock and roll bass player myself, uh, I think there's a couple of virtues which are really important. One thing is to make sure the whole goddamn thing moves and push it ahead and be on top of the beat. And the other thing you can really do, I think, and you can add melodic stuff, which you might, if you're not a musician, might even notice like that, but you feel it and it gives an, a melancholic twist or it can give us add texture, which is just super important for the overall experience um, of the song. And I think that Jeff, he's really good at that. Also, like his melodic skills and his knowledge of um, tonalities and stuff. And if I put one example, which I think where I, Jeff is just brilliant. If you look, um, if you listen to Whipping, pretty simple actually. Almost all of it is within an E minor chord. But what uh, Jeff does, he really pushes the beat. Boom, boom, boom. And then he finds all these empty spaces when they're there. Not too much, but just add these doo -doo 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 -doo. these notes, never interfering with its vocal or anything. And it just gives that excitement and tension. And, and you can just, he just really pulls that song. I think you can hear that in many, uh, in, in many podium songs. And uh, I even said like the, the last chorus of whoever said, if you listen to the new stuff, I think that's, you hear his doo -doo -doo, you hear those, uh, Tonalities and dynamics, which just adds this melancholic but still heaviness to to the tracks, which makes it twisted but still accessible and sweet somehow. And uh, he's great at that. That's a great uh, part of Jeff's one of the elements of Jeff's bass playing, which is really cool. And I was even thinking, if you go to the music, like the Quick Escape. I was really a bit thinking when I read the lyrics, which I think is one of the greatest songs, maybe the best song on the album. Um, yeah, I love it. But yeah, that's Jeff is so good on this record. Oh my God, isn't he? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> wow. You really, really, you really hit the nail on the head, but he's like peaking right now in terms of his ability to kind of, you know, play this machine, know how to kind of interact with Pearl Jam in a way that sort of, you know, really gets a lot out of it but um he's 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 an inspiration right now for sure oh uh, yeah i could see i mean even though like uh, the opening song uh, whoever said was also an amazing song but you know all the textures and all the lines he does around and the chorus and things it just yeah it adds that whole drive and melancholic greatness just uh yeah so he's he's uh, you feel that like he's really oh totally Totally, he's he. It's you know he's he's the musical, but he's the musical leader of the band right now, which is awesome. I love yeah. it. I love it. That's what I had the feeling. That's what I said. Also, felt like this was my first impression. This is Jeff Amon's finest hour.
Actually, one, one, of, one of the key tracks for me, we talked a lot about Dance of the Clairvoyance, we talked uh, on pretty much on that last time, but uh, uh, I think Quick Escape sounds like a, a, a great, maybe not entirely new territory, but a, but a really, um, something really powerful and, and, and kind of scary and heavy, and it remind, if I should say something it would remind me of, it would be Queen of the Stone Age, sort of around the Era Bulgaris uh, record. Um, Great. Like it sounds like six, 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 and that. Yeah. What, what What's that song to you? I mean, it's Jeff Amitz showing his, you know, his heavy metal prowess. I mean, and not only that, but you know, doing those stab chords are just pure, you know, Jimmy Page. I mean, just straight like channeling jimmy page those you know i mean those those stabs that's all jeff amen and and the fact that me and mike get to play those together we're just so excited because it's just it's a it's a it's got a it's got real that, that you know that i like to say that you know that's a it's got a, it's got three legs on that stool. You know, you really you're really stable on it. Um, it's got this totally swinging bass line. Um, you know, the guitars pop in and out and are just sort of uh, adding uh, stability and power to it. They're not getting in the way of the bass. And uh, and then everyone meets up in a few spots and and makes it crazy. And then, then the ending is just so uh, transcendent in terms of just. Um, you know, sort of, sort of chaos of, of really, sort of go wherever you want to go and let it go. Um, I just, I, I just, it's a, it's a wonder. That's yeah. all. I love it. How was, how's that been at rehearsals? Great. I don't think sharing stuff like this will ever feel like business as usual. Extra super duper special thanks to Henrik for allowing us to do this. And if nitty gritty details about your favorite band are up your alley, well then Henrik's book, Pearl Jam, The More You Need, The Less You Get, will be right up your alley as well. And extra super duper also special thanks to our channel mom, Kara in Canada, for putting together that skateboard montage, What's Better on Jeff Day, than meditating on something that Jeff likes to do. So with all this talk of Jeff Amen's heavy metal prowess, I thought what better way to get to know a songwriter than to get to know one of his deep, deep cuts. So here we go with how to have a good time playing along to Jeff Amen's Safe in the Car. And I phrase it that way because there's a lot of melodic elements in this song and you can't play them all at once. So this is me cherry picking which parts I would play if I were to turn on the record, which I just did. <laughs> play along with the song, which I just did. Put your guitar into drop D. Now, for this beginning part, you can just play the low string if you want and go two, 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 five. And when you get to that five, give it a little bend. And then two, 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 open. Two, 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 five. And that's it. Repeat. Two, 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 five. Two, 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 open. Or you can kind of make it a drop D power chord thing. Of course, drop D power chords are all three or two fat strings in the same fret. Depending on. much good as you want there. Speaking of crazy Jeff Ament fills, there is one in this song, and I listened to it backwards, forwards, slow, and every which way from Sunday, and at first I thought it was on the A string, open two, same thing on the D string, and up to the fifth fret on the D string. But it sounds busier than that, and there aren't really any other notes that come in between those notes insofar as the pentatonic scale in question is concerned. So let's give it the old pluck, hammer, pluck technique. Right? Open 2-2. Two, two. Same thing on the D string. And then up to the D string, 5th fret. And now we have the amount of, you know, the beats that we want to hear. And then the second half, I don't think there's any disputing, it's D, 4-2. to two. A, 4-2, open. power chord so nice and slow and in context but when we hit that 
F sharp power chord. That's the fourth fret right away. That's actually the first measure of the chorus, which is kind of oddball because the chorus has seven measures in it. Usually, it's not a hard and fast rule, but usually things are divisible by four in music. Seven is, of course, not divisible by four. F sharp. B, that's the second fret of the A string, regular power chord style. D is the fifth fret of the A string. And then we repeat from there. F sharp. So, I don't feel safe in the car. Don't feel. Here's the C sharp before we go back to. And so forth. I can't calm it, I can't stop it. We've got a bass playing scales, namely the B minor scale and the F sharp minor scale. You can do that right along with the bass if you want. That's A, 2, 4, 5, D2, but this drop D thing has messed us all up in, in our shapes, right? So let's just stay on the low now D string and go 4, 6, 7, 9, followed by our F sharp power chord, and then our E power chord on the second fret. So. You could just play a B minor during the B minor scale, or an F sharp power chord during the F sharp minor scale, and then you play another F sharp power chord, followed by our E power chord. But my favorite way to have a good time playing this song during that section is to turn those scales into power chords. And again, not to say that anyone's doing this on the track, but this is my good time, not, not Jeff Amen's good time. So we got B on the second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret as power chords now. And then on our low, on our drop D style power chords, same frets as we did the scale. you chose to do that. That happens a bunch of times and the last time you hang on the E power chord on the second fret for one more measure or four more beats until we go back into our... I love doing this. And so forth. And that'll do it. Those are the pieces as far as my good time is concerned anyways. Thank you so much for being here for this smorgasbord of activities as today we honor Jeff Ament in the best way that I know how. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.